It's about time for our class to begin. If you turn your Bibles, please, to Ecclesiastes, the eighth chapter. We are opening up into this section about how wisdom guides us. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he opens up in this first uh, verse <clears throat> to show who is the, pardon me, <clears throat> who is the wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of the thing. So what does the word interpretation mean to you? How do we usually use that term? David? Okay, and, but the Hebrew word means solution, and you just described it. If we have to interpret a word from one language to another, we solved a problem, didn't we? If I'm speaking in a foreign language, you do not know that. An interpretation says, that's not my problem. I know exactly what you're, you're saying. If it's dealing with a solution of, I don't understand this, then I'm getting to the point of understanding how things work. Not just knowledge that is there, but how it, it is accomplished to success, to solving a, a problem. And so we see who is the wise man who knoweth the interpretation of a thing, how things are solved, as, as I think a great way of looking at this Hebrew term in our word interpretation in, in my Bible, or, there are a solution. He said, a man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. So when he has understanding, there's a sense of the countenance changing. A lot of times the Bible speaks about the countenance of, of one, to, denoting that maybe there's the idea I have sin and my countenance has fallen. Uh, my countenance is shining because I, in this context, I got to I solve the problem. I, there's a solution. He said, making the face to shine and the hardness of his face is changed. The hardness I did not understand is changed to shining. Uh, I, do, I do understand. So I think he's trying, in this very first verse, he's expressing about man's wisdom. But you'll drop down with me into verse five when we will we'll, we'll go in between two. Who knoweth the commandments shall know of evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerns time and judgment. So one thing we're going to realize that everything has a time, and everything's going to appear, and we're going to be facing the consequences of that, which is sometimes the idea of judgment. That opens up to us that we're in the judgment of a king that we have no power over. He rules over, every, over everything. And therefore, we must submit to him. We walk with wisdom before him. And that's what we're seeing taking place. If you have a hardened, rebellious spirit regarding authority, like I'm under a royal king, and you and I are not under that, but we're, we're putting ourselves there because Solomon is writing to people. He was a king. And he was walking, writing to people who were under kingships. But regarding authority in this world, what wise things should you consider? First of all, I want to have wisdom. Because wisdom makes my face shine. I don't want to live in darkness and be in a time of judgment that's coming upon me. Because there is a time for that. When that moment happens, I don't want to be on the losing side. I don't want to be on a side that's... Uh, uh, is going against God. I want to follow his wisdom. So that's underlying this as well. So let's look at some things that he says here, and we'll, we, we can list these. First of all, keep the king's command, and that, re, in, in American standards, said that in regard of the oath of God. Now we've seen in chapter five, where I'll just, we, we've got to be very humble and, and, and reverence for God when we enter into his house. And the context is our oaths. That's the oaths that we make. It, well, I'll just keep the commandments of God, but I won't fulfill my promises that are solemn before God. It is my oath. It is that my oath in connection with following the commandments of God. And so he puts those two together, which we've already seen in, in chapter 5, that we need to pay attention to our oaths. And we're not to even even say them if they're going to be out of order. We could not fulfill them. Let your yea be yea and your nay be yea, nay in the New Testament. Let your words be what you fulfill because you're going to fulfill the words that you promised before God. So he, he connects commandments with oaths. 
It's not oaths from God. It's oaths to God in connection with keeping all of the commandments of God. So we're involved in realizing I'm going to be involved in keeping the king's command in that regard of the oaths of God. Things I promised I'm going to fulfill as I live before the king. That's just wisdom. That means I'm going to solve a lot of my problems if I'm especially having a problem with authority. But here's one of the ways in which we see right in, in the presence of a king. What does he say in verse 3? My Bible says, he that is hasty to go out of, of his presence. So be not hasty. Be not hasty to go out of his presence. And he just won't stop there. What's that have to do with anything? What's it like when you, with your husband and your wife and you're trying to discuss something, you just walk out of the room? What is that? Okay, you have no problem with that. Let me think of another <laughs> illustration. That's disrespect. <laughs> That's disrespect. I'm talking to you. We're, we're supposed to be talking to this. I ain't talking anymore. A man can do that. He can huff and puff like a little girl. Walking away. you just being like a little girl. Or you can stand there and don't be hasty. But here we're before a king. You think he likes that? I'm talking to you. I'm the king. You're, 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 you're just a subject. And you realize that, that that's not wise to do. That doesn't solve anything for you. Because you can't handle the moment, and you, and you walk out with, with, in, in kind of a, a, a puffy manner. So we, we, we realize how important uh, that, that is. But it's in the context of always keeping the commandments of God that we're involved in doing that. Look at Proverbs 14.35. Uh, so that, that's when we're in the presence of our God. But just to lay down the groundwork of, of God's wisdom. The king's favor is toward a servant that dealeth wisely, but his wrath will be against him that causeth shame. And I'm not dealing wisely when I walk out of the presence of, of the king. His wrath will be upon me, and who's going to be uh, ashamed that day? The one that walked out. The one that walked out of his presence. And that becomes, a, that becomes a, a problem. So let, let's let, look at an, another one in, in that context when we're, we're looking at how, how to be wise. Because we mentioned these all in these first few verses. Be not hasty. And then secondly, do not persist. Persist not in the evil thing. Persist not in the evil thing. Why? Because what is the king? What's his place? He doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. I think it was expressed in the class last week. We were taking us back to Romans, the 13th chapter. What is the purpose of government? It's to punish the evil and to praise the good. So if you're going to do evil, don't persist in that because the king's going to have his way with you. At least he understands the purpose of he's got to rule. A lot of times they'll rule, I'll, I'll, it'll please me what I want to have done. But that's what we're going to have. So don't persist to do uh, evil, for he doeth what pleaseth him. For the king's worth has power. And we'll, we'll take that to verse 4, uh, question number 2, uh, verse 4 there. So the idea, I want to walk with wisdom. I am not going to be hasty to leave his presence. That's disrespectful, even though... I don't like him, even though I don't like what he's saying, and I can't handle the moment. You better handle the moment. That's the solution. That's wisdom. Because he is going to do what pleases him. And you're not going to win that battle. There are just some battles and some situations where there's nothing good that comes from it. I don't know if you've ever been in situations like that. You have right on your side. You have everything in order that, that, that was wrong what was done. But sometimes the time for dying on that hill is not there. You want to die on a, on a hill that you, can, that you want, that you have more control over. That's not going to be victorious for you at all. It's probably not good judge. It's not, it's not a judgment in your favor. It may not be fair. You may have a right to speak up for what you, you know, your own rights. But sometimes the time is not right. And in the place of a king... We would have to humble ourselves, and we're not going to do evil. 
I'm going to keep my promise. Maybe I made a promise and the king found out that I didn't fulfill it. I, I'm going to, that's not wise. I'm going to do it because of my relationship to God. But right before a king, he does what he pleases. And to walk out of his presence is disrespectful. You will pay a price for that. So what does a wise man do? He doesn't leave it until the king says, you're dismissed. And you're going to do what's, what's right in the eyes of the government, unless it contradicts God's word. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel. But this is life under the sun and dealing with reality that we might have in, in, our, in our lives. So any, anything you want to add to that in question number one? Because verse four speaks of power. Verse seven speaks of power. Verse nine speaks of power. So in those verses, I want us to see what, what did the author see in this world regarding the use of power? Sometimes it's my power to do something. Sometimes it's the, the, the power of government to do what they need to do. So let's look at those things beginning with verse 4. He says, For the king's word hath power, and who might say unto him, What doest thou? Well, What's the power there? He rules and you don't. He's in charge, you're not. I don't like that. But that's, that's, that's the way it is. Life under the sun. And he said, and you don't say, what doest thou? Didn't God argue that way? I'm your creator. And why, and why do you argue, why did you make me thus? <laughs> he made you the way you are. He made you upright. He didn't make you a sinner. But he, you don't question God. In that sense, because he has, he is God. Don't question the king, because he's king. What doest thou? So whoso, whoso keepeth the commandment shall know no evil thing. You keep doing what the king says is right. And again, we're in a context that that's still pleasing to God. And there's his minister over me at that moment of time. And then you won't, you won't know. You won't experience an evil thing. He won't put you in prison. They put Joseph in prison. Well, it was a false accusation, and he had to experience that. But what, what we're saying, this is government, and just stay on the side of, of the law. No evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth time and judgment. And we, we, we talk about the, the, the time and, and judgment that we're, we're ex examining. Uh, there's a number of, of Proverbs we have, but look at, look at Proverbs uh, well, let, let's, let, me, let me go to uh, Ecclesiastes about time and, and judgment before we go to Proverbs. Uh, when we speak about the idea of, of, of time, we, sh we notice in chapter 7, In the day of prosperity, be joyful in the day of adversity, consider. Yea, God hath made one side by side with the other. God's done this. To the end that man should not find out anything that should be after him. We don't know what lies ahead. He puts times of prosperity and he puts times of adversity before you. Wisdom is, this is how I react to each one because God has a hand in, in, in all of that. Chapter 3 and verse 14. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it and nothing taken away from it. And God has done it and men should fear before him. That which has been long ago is that which, which has been long ago, and that which is to be hath long ago been. But God seeketh again that which is passed away. Moreover, I saw under the sun that justice was in the place of, that in the place of justice, wickedness was there. In the place of righteousness, that wickedness was there. I said in my heart, God will judge the righteous and the wicked, for there's a time for every purpose and for every work. And God has set these things forward to prove them in verse 18. And to realize that man, the fall of the sons of men, the fall of beasts. One thing happened to them, they die. And the consequences of time and judgment. Sometimes it might mean my death. And he'll, he'll, he'll get in to speak about that in this context. About power that we have. So there, there is indeed a, a, a power that, that we're observing, uh, understanding here. And, and that's what wisdom does. So for every purpose, there's a time and judgment in verse 6. 
And then he speaks about the misery of man. Knowing that, I have no control over it. God has placed it there, and I have to experience it. Misery of man is great upon him, for he knoweth not that which shall be. Who can tell him how? Who can tell him how it shall be? So let's stop there. We could be looking at that. I don't know what will take place uh, tomorrow. And it'll be true. Will it be adversity? Will it be prosperity? I know how to handle that, chapter 7. But in the context we're seeing here, it could be when. I know when it happens. There's a, there's a time for, for the judgment, and I have to experience it in time. And he's, I think he's, he said, how it shall be, how it shall be. In what context will that be? Well, when we're, we're dealing with things, will I be in the context of a king and I need to walk with wisdom? Don't be hasty. Do whatever you do, don't, don't blow your, lose your temper and don't be huffy puffy and walk out like a little girl. Don't do that. Be, be a man take it and, and be responsible and listen to him. And you don't walk out until he says to I, I need to put that into my being. I don't, at that time, how will I act? And sometimes we don't know. What about Peter? Oh, I never do what Peter did. He said, he, I never do what I did. But what happened? Fear, uh, all the things overwhelm us, and we find ourselves doing something. And we need to understand God brought that moment on. And we need to try to walk in, in judgment the very place we could. So it's the idea of not just uh, what, but in what manner it comes. Have you ever said, I thought up. This is the way I'm going to have that difficult conversation. And you think through things and you, tr you try to make sure, uh, that, oh, that could, they could get the wrong connotation there. And you work on it. You're, you're a fool if you don't. If you're going to have a discussion with someone that you care about and that it's a serious thing to do. You, you realize how will, that, how will that be received? And some people don't. They just about themselves and they just throw it out there and it's taken the wrong way and the whole, whole, the whole moment falls. And we've got we to be wiser than that. But the moment something happens, all of a sudden, everything changes. And we have to have the wisdom to be quick on our feet and, and make the right uh, decisions there. And we understand how, you know, as the famous... Boxing idea, everybody has a plan until they get hit in the face. Then all things are all. Plan B. <laughs> Strive, whatever. And sometimes we get hit in the face coming from left field, and we have to really be a strong character to understand when that happens, I don't know what that's going to be like. But I need to walk in wisdom the best way that, best way that I can. So, you know, well, who, for who can tell him how it shall be? And, and God will bring it in and will test us in moments that uh, we thought we had control and we find we don't. And we've got to work on that. All right, verse, verse 8. There is no man that hath power over what? Over the Holy Spirit? Is that the context? I don't have power over the Holy Spirit, that's for sure. Let's move on. What's this spirit? What is this spirit? Your breath. You're talking about your life. You talk about that which, which uh, animates your body, your spirit. Over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath the power over the day. See, the time frame. What will that be like? What's the time, what's the situation that I'm going to die? And you, you don't have power of the Spirit to retain it, neither hath he power over the day of his death. There, and so that's the point. I don't know. Nobody can tell me what that's going to be like. I've got a book in my office of, of, of one who was, the, who was a man of the world, and uh, he was a, a businessman, but he was so curious how people died. And he wrote a book on they went that way. <laughs> they went that way. And people have died so many different ways and many different situations. Some of them are, are, are comical, but some of them are very sad. And, and that we don't have, who can tell us how we're going to go? And we don't. We, we want to, 
you know, I, I want to die in my sleep. You know, we, we say, I hear that a lot. It's not just go to sleep and never wake up. That would be nice, but sometimes we may have to, to die a very horrible death. We don't know. Secondly, when he says there's no discharge in war, the word discharge means release. What are we talking about? That moment of time. Because you're in the battle, and it's either me or you. In that battle, there's no release. You have to, in that moment of, that's why I'm saying this time factor, I think he's emphasizing. There's no, no discharge in war. There's no release when you're in the battle. You either fight it and I surrender. You fight it and you win. He said, well, there's my release, but you couldn't avoid it without war. And that's, that's just the reality under the sun. We see the war in the Middle East. And are we going to go in that city? That's where the enemy is. And people say, no, you can't do that. And we've got to have humanitarian things. It's war. And it's time. It, it'll, be, it'll be fought out. It will be, it will be done. Or one is not going to be achieving their goal of have, being protected. And it will, it will end. It will be fought out. And all the world can complain about it, but that's probably the way it's going to be. There's no release in war. When you start that, it's going to be finished. Now, it may be finished with dishonor and all those things, but you can't avoid it. It's, we're in the battle. And I think that's what he's saying. There's no discharge in the battle of war at that, at that time. And then he speaks about the fact, neither shall wickedness deliver him that is given to it. Wickedness never wins. Well, they sure did get by with it. They may get by with it all their life. But what do we know? God is going to have the final say. There's a, a time for judgment. And there may be injustice, as we saw in chapter 3, may be injustice. And where, where there ought to, there's wickedness where justice ought to be. But in the end, that will never win. So what's wisdom? What lights the, your countenance of your face? I want to do what's right. And doing what's right may be hurtful to you at the moment. It may not be, that, wasn't, that didn't show wisdom of this world. I, I, I let them win, so to speak. But you, you kept your mouth shut. You didn't, do, you didn't revile when reviled against, against because they we're Christians. Didn't speak bad about them because uh, they spoke bad about you. You're getting even. Let God to have the vengeance. We see those Principles, I will recompense. I will take care of that injustice. And that's hard for us to do because we're in control of everything. But we can't control the day that our breath leaves our body. We may be holding on, and we may wish we died. We may wish we're dead, and we still hold on. And our will has a lot to do with how long we last. But the day of our death, that time frame, we do not have the control over that to retain it at that time of death. So those are the, the three things. He has no power the day of his death. There's no discharge in war. You have to fight that battle, that moment. You shall wickedness deliver him. It's not, wickedness is not going to deliver you from, from the relationship with God. It will not uh, allow you to escape that because we're going to give answer to what we've done. Any, any, any comments on, on the, that section? Notice in verse 9, all this I've seen applied my heart in every work that is done under, under the sun. And it says, there is a time wherein one man hath what? Power over another to do what? To hurt him. To his hurt. He has power over another to his hurt. And that becomes, there's a reality. And there again, the righteous man may be hurt by a king that's unrighteous. And we will have to face that. One has power. That's how men use their power to, to uh, overcome others. And we're seeing in our country where, you know, we see other governments able to do this, but our, our government, things are coming out where there's individuals that have been persecuted by our government because they didn't like what we did. And it's all... It's all, we don't, we don't see this in public. There's a lady over in, in Russia. She, years ago, she spoke about an affair that a leader of our country had. And now the leader is 
punishing her. She can't even go home to her, her, her daughter's uh, wedding, fear of what the government might do. That's our government. And so issues like that creep up in any nation, any government, but sometimes when people are in power, they can hurt you. They can weaponize things that they may have the constitutional power to, to do, but they don't have the right to do that. And, and there's times and seasons when that happens. And government can turn against you. We, we love government. We're going to honor government. But we're going to real, realize what is government doing and not, uh, not ignore it. But the point is, Ecclesiastes says, I may have to deal with that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't mean to break the law on January 6th. I was just there with everybody else and got caught up. And now I'm in prison. And I don't know what's going to happen to me. That can happen really easy, can it? That's happened to people. And so we realize that's reality. And sometimes government gets perverted because government is run by who? People. And we wouldn't need government if we were all angels. We have a government. And we have a very fine government. And it has its checks and balances when people are running it with that thought in mind that uh, we want justice for all instead of we want what we want at our time we want it and there's people that uh, rule that way and we have a right to vote them out you know that's a wonderful thing. we don't have a king that says you do what you want to I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing that and that's what's that's what's tough they lived under kings we have ways of getting out of situations but you sometimes still have to have to suffer for all those things that we are, are doing. So there's, there's that. Then, then uh, I saw the wicked buried and they came to the grave. I saw those that had done right went away from the holy place and were forgotten in the city. This also is vanity. So what are we talking about in verse 10? I mean, I'm saying verse 10 is talking about one thing. And he states it with those who are wicked and those indeed who have, have done right. So we're looking at contrast between them, but what do they have in common in this verse? Death. Death? Well, well he, I can't, he came to grave. I got that first, first, first part of verse 10, but they just went away from the holy place. Well, how, how'd they go away from the holy place? Because they're doing right. You don't go, you don't leave God. What happened? They died. They were in the holy place of Jerusalem. They died. And what happens when you die? Sooner or later, what happens? You're forgotten. You're forgotten. That's what he says. No, I'll never be forgotten. We'll never forget you. I remember plant October Years ago, Tom Roberts and I were finished up. We were playing golf that day. We were in a Burger King that day. Over in La Porte that day. And a plant blew up in Pasadena. We'll never forget you. Tell me who died that day. Did you even think about that these days? We'll never forget you was the standard of what we're going to remember. We want to do that. And I'll tell you, families will never forget that. But those of us who are just here in the news, I still remember the shaking of the Burger King and the port over what was happening on the ship channel. See, your memory will always be connected with emotion, and you will remember that. Because we have emotion connected with it. We have something connected with it. Our brain, and that, that will be in your memory, and you won't forget that. I remember when Kennedy was assassinated. Just saw him an hour before. I'm in, I'm in the uh, eighth grade. And I remember seeing him. He came by. We walked down the streets. We, and Kathy and I got to see them, him. And we'll never forget that. But some of you never experienced that. And you may not think much about the assassination other than of, of Kennedy's set the history books. But we, that's impacted in our, our minds. And though my dad would like to forget it, I still remember when he threw horse apples at me. And he's hoping I, I'll forget that one day. I still got it. Because I said, my, my dad's doing that. Of course, I was, I was doing that to a small kid. And he was teaching me a lesson. 
I learned that too. But did he have to do that? And you just think about all the things you bring to your memory. There will be an emotion. It's, it's wonderful. It was a beautiful moment and all that. Or it could be something that just shook you to your core. Your emotions will help you put things in memory and you won't forget that. But the point, the point is we, we realize that indeed we will be forgotten. And, and that's just a natural way. I, you go back and look at certain men that were important. And you say, I, I forgot that they lived. I didn't know they died, <laughs> but I figured they had, but you just forget them. And they're, they're not out before you all the time. And that's just a natural process that happens under the sun. So here's people that did right. And we take them out of the city, burial, honor them. And then they're forgotten. He said, this is so fleeing. All this idea of remembering people and, and thinking how important they are is fleeing. It's vanity. And so when you put all your hope that I will be remembered and we'll have this monument in place of me. They can take down your monument, can't they? And a Minnesota flag has just been changed because it didn't have, it had the indigenous people and Indians and so forth. They want to, they want to get it. So it's just a plain flag. What's, what's happening? We're taking things out that will be in the memory of future generations. You may call it good. You may call it bad, but it's the fact that people can and governments can do that. And, but we'll soon forget uh, the people that uh, we, were, we were close to. And we'll remember certain things, but their memory general will be forgotten. We've seen that argued already in, in Ecclesiastes. And that becomes the, the uh, I guess, being an adult. Because this Ecclesiastes, I think, should be studied by young people. Because I know at the end, we'll be talking about young people how they ought to remember the Creator in the days of youth. And he speaks about going into old age. So young people need to understand that. And the two adult, one of the adult eye openers, when your child reads this, all through here is death happens to us all, and here's the consequences of death. If you're a rich man, all your riches may be squandered in the next generation. That guy that has control of that will be, could be a fool. You will be forgotten. How come you are so wise? Wise, only wise men are going to be, they'll, they'll be forgotten. Well, I should have been a fool. They'll be forgotten. Sort of. You may remember notoriously what they were and have shame connected with their name. But you, that's the reality of our short time upon this earth. We will be forgotten. And that kind of hits your ego a little bit. But it, it is so true. Question number, I'm going to catch up here. What is the result when punishment for wrong is not speedily applied? What happens? Do you think that's true? <laughs> I think that's very true, isn't it? And in any, any society, I think it's true in our society. So it's a wisdom that we need to, uh, to, to, to remember and how important, important that is because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Let's talk about that. We are supposed to have our trials and so forth. Thank you. And that needs to be done in, in short order. We don't want to be extended. And I was talking about this lady in Russia. There's just an indictment against her. She doesn't know what it is, but it's on hold. We're going to keep her, punish her. And she's not going to get a speedy trial. She hadn't done anything wrong anyway, and they know it. But she can't even leave Russia because the moment she comes to America, they'll, 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 they will, they'll arrest her for what charges. They can think of anything they want to. They just, just punish because she's a whistleblower. And we're supposed to have rights to whistleblowers. Well, when individuals run the government, you might not. Ecclesiastes helps us understand that. And we, we can live and, and suffer with that. But this is so true, it's not speedily executed. What happens when a child gets by with something? What are they going to do next time? They may do it again. And, and that's why I think, you know, kind of punishment at the moment where they can see what they've done is probably wise. So they realize this is what I did wrong. That hurt, and I'm not going to do that again. That's hopefully they get the, they get the message. But what, are, what have we done in our country lately because 
agenda is. We think people have been mistreated in the past with their government, and therefore they're releasing people, <laughs> bonds, and, and people who have done bad things. What are they doing now when they, hey, 900 bucks, I, I can steal, <laughs> and I won't be punished for that. What do they do? Yeah, they keep stealing, don't they? And they steal more. And they get more aggressive. We've seen that in our country. This principle uh, set forth, not, not that, well, they didn't get a speedy trial. Uh, the point is, they, what was done, punishment was not given, but they were let, let out the next day. Policemen are having problems with that. Why do, you keep on, why do I keep on arresting them when the, when the DAs let them, let them out? We're, we're living through that time. And that's going to have to change because we see the chaos there. But the principle is here. And it's, it, indeed, it's, it's God's wisdom. Therefore, the heart of sons of men is fully set on to do evil. I have no consequences for my action. I'll keep doing them because I want to do them. And that's even stealing and extortion and rape and murder. People get, are getting away. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. Question, verse, verse number 12. And in the days yet surely, uh, prolong his days. Surely I know I shall, it shall be well with him that fear God and that fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days. Because there is a shadow because he, he feareth before, before God. So question number Though they prolong their days, they're, they're, the punishment is coming. That's what's, what is going to happen. Therefore, what should we do before God? Fear him. And notice, is this being re redundant or is he trying to make a, a, a statement that is furthering this? N notice, uh, it says, though a sinner do evil a hundred times and prolong his days, yet surely I know it shall be well with them that fear God, that fear before him. Why did he say that second part? Why is that there, you think? And this is just opinion you got to have, but I, I have mine. Uh, I, that fear of God just put a period there. Is it emphasis or has he said that in a different facet that you need to walk, and especially in the context, it's the timing. It's when the time happens. Because I think you could say, I fear God. But then you fear man, Peter, more than you fear God at the moment of test. It's that fear before him, that walk each day and fear before God. I fear him, got the, got the concept, but I'm walking that way too. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are a shadow because he feareth not, how? Before God. He may not even recognize God but he said I'm fearing before God I'm now in God's presence and I didn't hear him maybe the laws were uh, punishment was executed speedily I'm, I'm going to keep on doing my wickedness and all that but there's a difference between I fear God and then each day I walk I'm fearing God in that moment of time which I think the the writer has been emphasizing we not know what happens beyond it we know though the timing of it and how should we react and we should do so with, 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 with wisdom. Any comments on verses 13, 14, 15? What can we do even in times when the righteous suffer and the wicked prosper? What, what, can, we, what can we do? Let's look at 14, 15. There's a vanity which is done on the earth that there are righteous men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Righteous or like wicked men, <laughs> they have to suffer. Again, there are wicked men who happen according to the work of the righteous. They're looking like they're righteous and they're wicked. I said this is also vanity. Then I commended mirth because a man hath no better thing under the sun to do what? Eat and to drink. Does that sound familiar to you in our studies? To eat and to drink and to be joyful. For that shall abide with him in his labor all the days of his life, which God hath given him under the sun. I can't control. Thank you. I can't control. I'm living a righteous life and I get killed in a, in a horrible way. 
I can't control the wicked living like they're, pro they're like the righteous and they get by with it. But what I can control is rejoicing in the days that I have have blessings from God. And I can I can reach for that. I can have that in my grasp all the days of my life in his labor, all the days of his life, which God has given him under the sun. He comes back to deal with what I do have control over. Instead of thinking about the injustice and think about the sadness, I can think of the joy. Here, God has blessed me, and it's the fruits of my labor, and I can enjoy them. When you don't rejoice in the fruits of your labor, a day goes by that you could have had joy instead of worrying about how bad it is. And I just think it's a wonderful way to, to deal with uh, the toughness of, of the world around you and how difficult it can be for you. And trust that you'll do that. Our time is up. Any, anything you want to add to it before we, before we uh, close the session? Okay, thank you.